that there is a, a young generation or a new generation of African savvy, uh, creative, artistic, intellectual, political people on the block, if you want to say so. And uh, this is something that you sort of started seeing or started experiencing and noting um, maybe in the maybe 10 years ago or so where um, you could really see uh, a different attitude towards Africa itself and the concept and the idea of Africa itself and the idea of Africanity or Africanness, so to speak. And on the one hand and on the other hand also a totally uh, different attitude and, uh, you know, opinions also towards the West or, you know, uh, a relationship with the West. Uh, and um, and also uh, a totally independent sort of free take or um, on history of the past. So that created, from my point of view, very free and savvy and. Uh, um, politically astute people working on so all sort of you know uh, professions. It's not just in the so-called uh, artistic uh, creative field, but uh, you find these people in business. You find them, you know, in economy. You find them in science. You find them in. Absolutely. So, um, and I think that this is a, a fundamental shift in the in the kind of uh, image that you render of yourself, uh, or also in the kind of the way that you want to be perceived. The generation of the so-called bone freeze, if I may kind of use the term that basically applies to South Africa, but into this uh, uh, internet generation, all these people were born after 1989, um, were becoming slowly mature and, uh, and uh, somehow um, not influenced anymore by um, this kind of very heavy political, you know, uh, legacy that uh, that uh, people like me and others have, and uh, um, I mean another generation have, but rather about the free internet, the accessibility the mobility, the borderless kind of, uh, you know, lifestyle, that the on-the-click lifestyle, so to speak. I mean, you should not forget that uh, for a very long time, I mean, uh, uh, there was one party poli uh, uh, political regime in many African countries. And uh, so the 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 whole toy malls of the early 90s that spread over to the 2000s, bringing, you know, the, the consciousness that you can vote and that you can change something with your vote. And uh, that, that also had uh, a, very, uh, a very strong influence on, on that generation. I mean, when I look at Senegal, for instance, you know, or South Africa, or you know, uh, uh, Kenya, uh, and then the ensuing recently the, the 
the entire African uprising starting in Tunisia, Egypt and so on. I think that, that's really part of this baggage, you know, cultural, political, historical baggage that is really shifting things in, a, in, a, in, in, a, in very deep ways. An African is African at the very last instance, you know. He is first and foremost a Wolof or a Douala or a Igbo or, you know. And then after that he becomes maybe Nigerian, Cameroonian or Senegalese and then maybe he becomes African. So I think this is also one of the reasons why Pan-Africanism did not succeed and it's still not, you know, uh, really coming back to um, a kind of a new proposal or a new try. Um, to my pity, because I, I really think that the Pan-African idea is, uh, could be something that could save Africa in many ways. I'm a fervent Pan-Africanist and uh, I strongly believe that unity is not necessarily uh, against unicity, uniqueness and diversity and uh, pluralism and so on. So unity has always been something that was scary for people because if you imagine a unified function in Africa, it's too powerful. So um, I think it's a, I think it's a real pity because the, regardless of uh, all the diversity, all the you know uh, particularities, all the uh, different histories and uh, all the languages and so on. I really think that, for me, there is something clearly, uh, there are a few things that are clearly African and uh, it may sound naive and romantic, but I believe in naivety and romance because I think these are powerful energies that uh, can uh, make you change things. I mean, my stand is clearly political and uh, I think that uh, um, we live in an environment where you have to address politics and not politics as a kind of electoral politics, but police are in the sense of policy in the daily, you know, human uh, interaction. So, uh, and I think it's, uh, it is, uh, it is also the role of, uh, of art to create social value, you know, if not financial or moral, but at least social value to certain matters that are around. There, there is this understanding of art as, a, as entertainment, as leisure, as decoration, as, you know, uh, something that is, should not be taken too seriously something, a practice that is, is not fundamental to society because, you know, they have fund yeah, they have fundamental issues such as, you know, health and education and, you know, water and HIV AIDS and now Ebola and, you know, there are more pressing matters and that art is not a pressing matter and I think it's wrong. And, uh, uh, and beyond that, that kind of uh, uh, um, understanding and attitude has a strong influence also on the production, you know, and uh, has a strong influence on the, on the role, on the, on the status of the artist in the society. And, uh, uh, and this is, if you take it from that stance, then I think definitely, you know, more uh, analytical, theoretical and discursive kind of criti uh, critical dealing with artistic practice is more needed because um, 
this kind of way of looking, way of, you know, thinking um, needs to be established somehow. And uh, in order for artists to be taken more seriously. Uh, and I think it's, uh, design is much more able to do that than art is, honestly. Everything is design on the continent. I mean, I, I, I'm not a specialist to talk about design. I rather talk about style, you know, and, uh, and because style is, uh, is something kind of immaterial and it's a kind of a mindset. And when you are lucky, you grow up naturally with style in Africa, which is not the case in many other places, like in Europe, for instance, you know, I mean, and even when you're not lucky, style is present in the, in everything. People, people like to do, and it's not just dressing up, you know, it's just even the, the interaction with people, you know, just the greeting procedure is about style also. So you can also call it design or, you know, social design or interaction design, so to speak.